I walk to walk. Huh? I walk to walk. What? I walk to walk. Hello and welcome to Tea Leaf English. I'm your host, Zhu. I'm your co-host, Vipra. So in this episode, we are going to talk about some common pronunciation problems that Myanmar learners have with consonants and vowels. So in a previous episode. We've talked about sounds, and today we're going to talk about problems that Thu and I have experienced with Myanmar learners. Not everybody is the same, of course, but Thu and I think there are, you know, some common features and some common problems and mistakes that learners make. So we like to talk about this today. We're going to begin with common problems with consonant sounds, which many Myanmar learners have. I'm gonna say a sentence. Listen and identify the issue. She's a kind person. She's a kind person. So, the issue there is that you didn't pronounce the final. D sound. You pronounced the m like kind, but you didn't say kind, which could cause some confusion. For us, I think we can pronounce the beginning consonants well, but it is a bit challenging to say the final consonants. For example, we can easily say doctor, but we find it difficult to say lift. So we tend to say lift. Instead of lived. Yeah. So when I speak Myanmar, the little bit of Myanmar that I can speak, if I am going to say the numbers, for example, ti ne don le na chauk, people always make fun of me saying that I say chauk. I pronounce the final consonant sound really strongly, and that's because I take that from my L1 or my, you know, first language, but. The opposite is also true because consonants are not pronounced as strongly in the final position. In Myanmar, people transfer that when they're speaking English. Sometimes. So, what can we do to address this issue? We're going to say the word "help," but first, place your hand in front of your mouth, almost touching your nose. Then, let's say the word. Help, help. Now, what did you notice or feel? You should have felt a puff of air on your fingers. So, if I say "hell," it's not there. But if I say "help," you should feel the puff of air. Is aspirated quite strongly, and to produce the sound correctly, you have to kind of release that air. This is the same for other final consonant sounds as well, like d, k. It's not as strong, but you still should feel the air, and that's the sign that you're producing the sound correctly. Yes, that's a good idea. That way, learners can be aware of whether they are producing the sound correctly or not. We call it a sensitizing activity. Try it with your students to raise their awareness. So we mentioned that Myanmar learners can pronounce initial consonants well. One thing I noticed is that consonant clusters at the beginning and the end can sometimes cause problems. So I will say a sentence, and I want you to try again to find the problem. I broke the television screen. I broke the television screen. You say screen, so you added an extra a、uh, sound between this and k. Yes, exactly. So that can sometimes cause problems or impede communication. One way to solve that. 
is, or to work on it, let's say, is to say it really slowly at first. So, screen, screen, and then to try and increase the pace slightly. So, screen, 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 screen. Doing this can help people to leave out that extra uh sound that we talked about. Yes, and one more thing you can also ask your students is to ask them to think of how they feel when they are saying the word. Say, for example, imagine like picture it, visualize it, and try to say, "screen, screen, screen." Screen and make them aware of how they are pronouncing it. You could also record yourself saying it as well, and listen back to make sure that you're saying it correctly. So, sticking with consonants, I have an example of a specific consonant next that many Myanmar learners struggle with. So, listen to this sentence that Thu is going to say. And I like you to pay attention. Which one is correct? Number one. It's my pleasure. Number two. It's my pleasure. So, which one is correct? Number one or number two? Yes, it's number two. So, can you guess the problem sound? It's zh. So many students say sh or z, but the correct phoneme is zh. Pleasure, not pleasure or pleasure. Pleasure. So let's start with sh. Can you try and say sh? Like imagine somebody is sleeping. Sh. Now, put two fingers on your throat and voice the sound. So say, zh, zh. Can you feel the vibration? We talked a little bit about this in a previous episode. So now try it with another word. Casual. Casual. So you'll notice the vibration more when the phoneme is said correctly. So I asked you to listen to the two sentences so that you can differentiate between sounds. It's an activity called sound discrimination, and it can be a type of sensitizing activity. You can try it out with other sounds as well to enable learners to notice the different sounds. So. We have talked about some common consonant issues with some Myanmar learners that are common. Now let's look at some vowels. Again, uh, listen to this sentence. I walk to walk. Huh? I walk to walk. You walk to walk. What do you mean? I walk to walk. Oh, hold on. Let me be more careful and precise. I walk to work. Ah, you go to work on foot. Yes, I do. So,、uh, what was the issue there? So the issue here is a vowel sound, uh, as in perfect. It's hard to pronounce this sound because, as far as I'm aware, we don't have this kind of sound in Myanmar. For example, we will say "sa bibi la," which means "Have you eaten yet?" and we wouldn't say "sa bibi le." So we don't have this kind of sound in Myanmar. "Sa bibi." <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so,、uh, to tackle this issue,、um, you can help. Your learners to be aware of where and how the sound is produced. So, for this sound, 
your tongue is low in your mouth, like near the bottom of your mouth as such, and it's in the center of your mouth. So just think about that now. Put your tongue at the bottom of your mouth now. Now, think about your lips. Your lips are stretched out as if you are smiling. It's quite similar to the uh sound, uh, but it's longer. So we have uh, and we have er, uh. not uh, er. Uh. So again, to produce this sound, put your tongue low and in the center of your mouth, stretch out your lips, then make a long voiced sound with your mouth nice and relaxed. Imagine someone hits you in the stomach very quickly. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. Now try saying these words using the sound. Perfect. Girl. World. World. Can you think of other words with the sound uh? Okay. So one other word is the word hurt. Hurt. Ah, I hurt my arm. Now, some learners may make mistakes and say, I hurt my arm. Or, I hit my arm. If the phoneme is not said correctly, but if it's said correctly, it should be, I hurt my arm. So how could you, as a teacher, help them? One thing you can do is bring in a minimal pair. Okay, now you are all my students, and I'm your teacher. Hurt, ah, hurt, ah, hot, Whew, it's hot, hot, Whew, it's hot. I am going to say one of those words. I want you to say, ah, if you think it's the word hurt and if you think it's the word hot. Hot. Phew. Hot. Phew. Hurt. Ah. Hot. Phew. Very good. Did you get that right? Yeah. I, I don't know. What do you think? You did. Yes, <laughs> you did, Tutu. I'm not sure about everybody else. <laughs> So now, let's practice that sound together. Hurt. Hurt. Can you remember where your tongue is? Yes, low, the bottom of your mouth and quite central. And what about your lips? Yes, they're stretched out. Hurt. Now, let's practice hot. Hot. So you may notice that your lips are more rounded. Hot. Now, can you practice? Hot. Hot. Hurt. Hurt. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Very good, though. Now, I want you to practice with your friend or your partner. So, I want you to say hurt and hot to your partner. Your partner has to listen to which word you say and respond with ah or Phew. Remember, don't say the word back to your partner. So let's practice one time again, Thu, just so everyone is clear. Hurt. Ah! Hurt. 
Ah! Hot. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay, so now, can you practice that with your partners now? Three, two, one, go. So from this activity, we can understand that minimal pair means pairs of words which only have one sound different. For example, hurt and hot. They both begin with and end with t. The difference is o and e uh sound. The final area I want to focus on is diphthongs. So we talked a little bit about this again in one of the earlier episodes. So a diphthong is a vowel that has two partial sounds that fuse together into one sound. The example we're going to focus on today is oi. Oi. This time, we're not going to give you any ideas. We want you to think. If your students had a problem with the oi sound, how would you like, improve this with your students? What would you do in your lesson to help your students be better at this sound? Imagine they're saying bye instead of boy. Like enjoy instead of enjoy. What would you do to help them? So remember that learners need to know how and where the sound is produced. They need to be able to differentiate the sounds. In this case, oi and i. And they actually have to be able to produce the sounds as well. So think of the different stages in your mini lesson, like what you could do. So after you come up with some lesson stages, perhaps you can ask your learners to say this sentence. The noisy boy had an annoying voice. The noisy boy had an annoying voice. So in today's episode, we talked about some common issues that Myanmar learners have with specific sounds and how we can help them. Firstly, do you agree? Have you experienced any difficulties with these sounds? Have your learners experienced any problems producing these sounds? Secondly, what other sounds do you think Myanmar learners struggle with? So you can send us a message, you know, put a comment under the video if you're looking at it on YouTube or Facebook. Get in touch with us and let us know. Remember, if you know another teacher or another learner that might benefit from this, please let them know about it, send it to them, share it, whatever you want to do. And thank you very much. This is Tay Leaf English, where we brew knowledge, sip inspiration, and connect with the vibrant community of teachers.